This is All Things Considered. I'm Robert Siegel. And I'm Noah Adams. In the back of an old Victorian house in San Francisco, a group of singers are warming up before rehearsal. Most of them don't read music, don't have any technical training, but they have gathered for a unique annual tradition to perform Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. The concert is presented by the San Francisco Community Music Center. It takes place on New Year's Eve, timed to finish exactly at the stroke of midnight. The Ode to Joy chorus in the fourth movement is notoriously difficult, even for the most expert of singers. Producers Kate Stilley and Sari Gilman talk with some of these amateur singers about the enduring appeal of Beethoven's Ninth. I sing all the time. This is the first time I'd ever heard that there was a group of people that do this every year for New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And when the minute, the second that I heard that this was happening, I said, yes, you know, and that, that was it. I knew I was going to sing it. As a child, whenever a group of people got together, uh, my grandmother would drag out very complicated music and just plop it in their laps and, and say, sing. And one of the things that, you know, as, as a child when you leave home was that you say that there are some things that you will never do again. And one of the things I would never use Miracle Whip in place of mayonnaise. And then I would never, ever sing in front of people again. <laughs> Dine at Selva. Dine at Selva. Well, I actually was going to do it last year, and I came to one rehearsal, and I kind of got a little too flipped out by what I would have to do to get ready. So I went to this one rehearsal, and then I never came back. One, two. I think I have this fear of singing off key, being late, making things sound worse than they would if I weren't there. And I don't know, sometimes I'm just like frantically turning my pages trying to keep up with everyone. When you're an adult and you learn something and you really don't know how to do it, you have a lot of fear because you, you kind of think, oh, I'm an adult, you know, I know how to do things. I, you know, I can take care of myself. I pay my rent on time, all that kind of thing. But when you have something new, you really don't know how to do it. Well, I don't know how to read music. You know, uh, my experience with Beethoven is purely emotional and experiential. This isn't about technicality. It's not about having studied at the conservatory. This is about the heart and about sincerity and about courage. One, two. <laughs> and um, so almost all of our marriage he struggled with cancer and then um, about a year and a half ago he died I was trying to forget that there was a holiday season I didn't want to hear the word Christmas I didn't send out any Christmas cards I didn't want to get any Christmas cards I just wanted it to be over with one of our mutual friends who was in a support group with him came to me around the holiday times and she says, what are you doing for New Year's Eve? And I said, well, gee, I don't know. And she says, well, you know, I sing Beethoven's Ninth with the Community Music Center. Why don't you just come along and sing with us? So I came out and, and did it. And I mean, it just, it just filled a, a huge hole in my life at the time. Beethoven's Ninth touches just about every aspect of the human experience. Everywhere from the black abyss of despair to the incredible transcendence of this spiritual joy. There is a long struggle in the Ninth Symphony and he moves through it 
into a feeling of connection to the natural world. I think that's Beethoven's trinity. All of nature, all of humanity, in unity with the ultimate creator of the cosmos. That was his vision, Uber Stern and Zelt. He couldn't have lowered those notes. Over the stars, beyond the stars. That's why the notes are so extremely high and that's why they go on and on and on. I think Beethoven was really shooting for infinity in the night. It's a huge journey to get to this place for everybody involved. I love that sense of unknown every time we get there. We don't know how it's going to turn out. And we try to search musically for that little place of controlled insanity, so to speak. And it's just absolutely in the music, if you allow yourself to get there. One minute you're low, the next minute you're high, and you're just going in between, and just, oh, and you're shouting out at, at one point, and then, and then being very soft in another, and it just, it's a, it's a very difficult piece to do. However, you know, at the end of it, you, you're on a high. I mean, you just, you can, I'm, I'm up for hours afterwards. Singing in that particular chorus, singing that piece of music at that time is an extremely spiritual feeling. For someone who is not religious I and mean, not involved in any kind of, of organized religious activity at all, this is as close as I get. I mean, you take your religious and spiritual experiences where you can, and this is where I take them. We heard from singers John Lindup, Carol Kalis, Nancy Cates, and Brenda Johnson, along with conductor Ors Leonhard Steiner. The Community Music Center Orchestra and Chorus will perform tonight in St. Ignatius Church in San Francisco. You're listening to NPR's All Things Considered.